Hi. Uh, thanks very much, Tanya, for inviting me. It's a pleasure to be here. Um, I'm Tarek Kokar. I'm the World Bank's Open Data Evangelist. And Tanya asked me to sort of give you a behind-the-scenes perspective of what transparency is like at the World Bank and what sort of impact uh, we've seen since taking steps to become transparent. So I'll start with kind of telling you why, why did we do it, um, kind of what did we do, and then what are the, a few of the impacts that uh, I've seen in the last sort of two, three years being there. Um, so first, a story that some of you may have heard, but I'll share it anyway. In December 2004, um, there was an earthquake in the Indian Ocean that triggered a tsunami, um, which cost the lives of about a quarter of a million people in South and Southeast Asia. Uh, about four months after the tsunami, um, there was a case of measles reported in a girl um, living about 60 miles south of Aceh. So um, in these situations, they deploy epidemiologists to go um, and investigate what was going on. Um, and they found that actually this girl had received um, an immunization against measles. So they were wondering, well, why do you have measles if you've received the immunization? Um, what they found out was that three different aid donors had immunized the same girl three times. Um, and it was the immunization that was giving her the measles symptoms. So that's um, an example of one of the categories of information deficiency problems that um, exist in the international development world. And that's one of the kinds of problems that we're trying to fix uh, with transparency, the rather blunt instrument of transparency, as, um, as John says. So at the end of 2009, the, bank <coughs> the bank's board decided to have um, uh, a new access to information policy. Um, and this is modeled after the access to information policies of India and the US. Um, and the biggest thing that it does, it changes the presumption from being closed to being open. By default, everything that the bank produces is open unless someone explicitly closes it, um, according to 10 sort of reasons that we have. Um, so with that as the foundation, we, we launched this sort of open data uh, initiative. And I like to say that we're open in three ways. We're uh, open about what we know, we're open about what we do, uh, and we support others to be open. I'll just tell you a little bit about each of those three dimensions, um, and then I'll maybe tell you uh, where I see some impact as the results of those three dimensions. So open about what we know. The bank, um, half the people who work at the bank are researchers and academics and statisticians and economists, and they don't really often know that the bank is also this bank that lends money and, and does projects in other places. So we produce a terrific amount uh, of knowledge, data, and research, so intelligence um, on the, the way of the world. What is the situation of uh, poor people? What's the GDP of this country? How many people are out of school here? Or what's the, what's the birth rate in this country? So all these um, crucial bits of intelligence that you just need to know if you're going to do anything, um, we have that, and we make it open. Um, this includes all of our sort of lengthier research as well as our sort of data bits. So that, that's open about what we know. The knowledge of the bank, we make it uh, free for anyone to, to access. Um, the second dimension is being open about what we do. So this is the operations, the projects, the sort of the business of the bank. Um, so in, again, in 2010, we, we launched an initiative called Mapping for Results. Um, and this is the first time that any international donor had decided to put all of its projects on a map. Um, you wouldn't think this is that novel, but it was pretty novel. Um, we hired a team of interns to geocode a bunch of project documents, and um, suddenly you see a map of a country like Kenya with dots all over it where you can uh, tell where the bank is working. This had a terrific impact. Uh, both on folks inside the bank and outside the bank, because no one really knew, kind of, we kind of knew individually where we worked, but no one had seen the picture of um, what, what's going on here. So we're, we're open about what we do, including the details of all the finances and contracts, so uh, the, the real sort of tools you need to, um, to build kind of accountability. And the last bit is we're supporting others to be open. So in the last couple of years, we've had success um, with our own transparency, so people kind of come to us and say, hey, how did you do it? You guys seem to be a big institution with similar problems to the ones we have. Um, can you give us a tip on, on how we can have a crack at it? So we do that. Um, we've advised governments and other international organizations. We produce um, toolkits and guidelines to help them. And we've initiated projects with some countries as well to, uh, to kind of give them a hand. So that's the kind of, these, these are the three ways uh, the bank has been open. But um, what, what's the sort of, what's the impact? What's the consequence? Um, of doing this. And while, while there are many, I just wanted to highlight uh, three for you. So the first one um, I find is the reach of the bank um, has expanded massively. If you went to the bank sort of five years ago uh, and you asked someone, so who are the bank's uh, customers? Who are our clients? Um, they'd be talking about, well, the government officials in the 100 or so countries that we work. These are our clients. These are our customers. You ask them now, who are our clients? Well, they include the clients, but it's also the users. We provide public goods. Uh, to over a million people a month who come to the bank's 
um, web properties looking for data. So we, we suddenly discovered this entire new constituency um, that we sort of serve. Um, and that's changed the way we think uh, a lot about what we do. So uh, from going closed to open, we've seen a tenfold increase in the number of people accessing our data and research. So for me, um, that's kind of a really important number. Um, I mean, we're, the only way that uh, data can actually have an impact in people's lives or uh, an impact on someone who is going to have impact in people's lives is if they can access it. Um, and if you've seen a tenfold increase in the number of people able to access and use this stuff, um, I see that as a good proxy for, um, for, for useful stuff happening. And a lot of this is due to uh, the, me the mechanics of being open. So before, um, if you wanted to access the data, you had to pay, go through a subscription wall and get into our databases. Now you just go to Google. Um, you type in the GDP of Kenya and Google, what's the first result that comes up? It's the GDP of Kenya, sourced from the World Bank with a little chart that takes you straight back to our site. Um, this sort of openness has allowed us to put information where people already are um, and get it to people uh, kind of where, where they need it. Um, the second kind of category of changes um, are a bit more fun, um, and I'll, I'll, I'll be as frank as I can, but they're changes inside the institution, right? So um, one slightly technical thing I'm sure you guys know about is, is APIs. So we produce APIs for all of our data. These are sort of ways for computers to talk to each other in terms of data. The effect of individual units of the bank producing APIs for our own data is transformative because suddenly bits of the bank that didn't talk to one another suddenly talk to one another through public interfaces. Um, you can't underestimate the kind of the impact of these sorts of things that you're not really um, expecting. So the act of opening up to the public has made the bank kind of better connected inside um, it itself. And as a result of the hugely increased visibility, I mean, um, a million visits a month, it, a third of all traffic that comes to the World Bank comes just looking for data. That's a tremendous incentive for people to say, um, if I've got stuff, I'm going to make sure it's on the open data site or it's an accessible in an open format because people will see it and people will use it. And that's ultimately what people want to, want to happen. Um, so it's provided a big incentive for people to continue um, to con continue opening up um, to, to make their stuff more visible. But the, the thing I find most fun is we have a program called um, the World Bank Finances uh, Program. So this is, a, a, as you expect, uh, being transparent about, about the bank's financials. And this is run by the bank's Department of Accountants. Um, now, when you pair the word accountants with hackathons and public innovation and running data jams and things, it just doesn't make sense, right? The, the bank's accountants are the most innovative group inside the institution. Um, they're the most publicly engaged. They're doing the most um, amazing and cool stuff, promoting the bank's financial information, which is not sexy stuff, <laughs> but they're doing a terrific job of doing it. So that's a massive change um, inside the institution to take the most conservative uh, element, if you like, and turn it into some of the most, um, some of the most dynamic stuff. Um, and the sort of third dimension uh, of impact that I kind of see is, is outside the bank as well. So the, f the first one is really other institutions um, doing the same sort of thing. So I feel like uh, the, the first big organizations who decided to go transparent set up a new set of norms. Um, I mean, now as a British citizen, if I go to the, uh, my kind of government's aid site, I'm expecting to see a map. I'm expecting to see a detailed breakdown budget of uh, where the money is going. Um, and this is increasingly the case for um, other countries and other multilateral institutions. So set, setting a norm and making it, making it the done thing, that's a really big um, impact, I think. Um, and secondly, we're kind of finding that people are taking, um, taking our stuff and doing really quite innovative things um, with it, not just sort of simply holding us to account, but doing sort of fairly deep analysis into our own work that we wouldn't have done. Uh, my favorite example is um, researchers at Aid Data. This is a, it's a group that's a, a partnership between um, Brigham Young uh, and William and Mary University. They took uh, data on the bank's projects in Afghanistan. So they put all the Afghanistan projects on a map. And then they added to those points um, what was the sort of success rating of those projects. So we also release our evaluations. Um, and then they mapped another layer of what is the spatial distribution of violence in Afghanistan. So the, the idea would be that if you've got an area of Afghanistan that's very violent, um, perhaps you'd expect to see more failed projects there um, and the same vice versa. What they found was that um, the areas of Afghanistan that were most violent, that's where we had the most successful projects. And the areas that were least violent, that's where we had the most um, sort of unsuccessful ones. Uh, that's, a, that's a piece of research or analysis that no one in the bank um, had even thought to do. Um, and it's just one example of many um, of folks taking our stuff and offering insights that we wouldn't have, um, we, we, we wouldn't have come to. Um, and my favorite sort of slightly naughty example is um, we held this conference 
uh, last year, which quite a few of you were at, um, the International Open Government Data Conference, and we had uh, people from around the world coming into the bank, um, a mixture of open data folks and access to information folks and um, civil society organizations. And this one guy um, with just a friend of his who he'd brought along from um, somewhere in Germany, I think, he went up to the bank president's office, um, knocked on his door and said, can I have a picture with you? Um, now, if you've been to the bank 10 years ago, you wouldn't have think of letting this guy into the building. And here are these guys kind of just walking up to the 13th floor, asking for a photo with uh, the head of this formerly very closed, very inaccessible institution. And the guy just saying, yeah, sure, let's have a snap. You know, what are you doing here? Enjoy, I'm busy. That, that, that kind of <laughs> friendly interaction. Um, and I see that's a, much, that's a much more subtle thing, but I think it's really important um, because it makes the entire institution a bit more approachable and more likely um, to result in sort of interesting, interesting sort of connections. Um, so in terms of the future, uh, I, I see a couple of in interesting questions for the bank at least. Um, for me, one is um, really sort of supporting other countries to do this stuff. Um, I, I mean, uh, much as I like the bank's data and much as I like that we're transparent about our stuff, you know, we're, uh, we're, we're this much uh, in the grand scheme of things. It's a tiny drop in the ocean of information that could be available. So. Um, I think our job, as, as Chris was saying, is really to facilitate others to do uh, what we kind of do. So I think that's, that's super important. Um, and on that note, I mean, Chris said that it starts with access. Um, I kind of think it starts a little bit before that as well. I mean, having digital access to information is really important, but in the countries that we work, you saw the, the picture of Kaduna um, that, that Chris had. I think that, w that was a, um, some sort of records office. I mean, I, I see pictures like that every day, and I've, I've been to these places um, lots of times. The, the state of... Um, information in the countries where we work is just very poor. So um, a lot of effort has to go into just digitizing things, making processes that either complement or um, even bypass uh, kind of old paper-based slow systems, um, and not just restricting it to digital access. I mean, my, some of my favorite examples of people accessing information is writing uh, budgets in chalk on the side of schools. Um, it, you know, it, it's not just about digital, it's, it's about getting information to people regardless of, um, of how you do it. And that's, um, that's what I have to say about open data and access to information at the World Bank. Thanks very much.